In part one of our interview with Temple of the River priest Drew Jacob, he discussed why his group decided to build a temple and how they ensured their building would be in compliance with city regulations. In part two, Mr. Jacob talks about how the temple was constructed and the challenges they faced. When you start off, everyone says, yeah, that'd be great to have a roundhouse. It'll be awesome. It'll only cost us $5,000 if we can build it out of materials we gather ourselves. And then you find out that that would be illegal. That structure is not allowed. Do you have the momentum to keep going? To say, well, let's look at other blueprints. Let's increase our budget to more than 5000 Let's put the timeline out farther. And so every sort of step of the way, you're always going to have those, those small, unpredicted things, which don't need to derail a project, but they easily can. That, I think, was the biggest challenge, just making sure everything was, was well planned out, really clear, and then when we hit stumbling blocks, we, we didn't get scared and stop, which was a big temptation at different points. Once we had figured out that we wanted to build a, an Irish cottage building, and that that would be legal and approvable, um, we, we realized that in order to have everything be up to code, um, the easiest thing to do would not be to build the physical structure ourselves, but to have a professional contractor come in who knows all the codes, um, can get the permits, and uh, has the licensing and everything else that we would need. Mr. Jacob sought bids from five different contractors in order to find the right company for the job at the right price. But one of the things I'd ask each and every one of them was, would you be willing to lower the price because this is essentially a you know, cultural and spiritual organization and we're, we're, you know, we're doing something for the community? Um, and out of the five kind of final candidates who, who we narrowed it down to based on their expertise and their pricing, um, two of the five were, were happy to do that. Um, and one of them, you know, the, the one we ended up going with, Willow River Construction, um, knocked several thousand dollars off the price. The construction company did much of the basic construction, but the Old Belief Society was able to save money by finishing off the building themselves. The construction company built the frame of the building, they, um, they poured the concrete slab for the foundation, they built the frame, and then they um, put up just the, you know, the, the sort of the rough walls, um, and of course they did all the wiring and that kind of stuff. Um, we then came in and did all of the um, kind of the prettying up work. We whitewashed the stucco on the outside. We did extensive work on the inside to add the molding and the woodwork and get everything looking pretty. We did a dappled plaster effect on the walls to change the color. Um, and then a lot of the uh, kind of the fixtures in here, I went you know, to salvage shops and things like that and found older windows and we had a custom door built and that kind of thing um, to really give it the feel that we were going for. All the hard work has paid off. The new temple is not only beautiful, it has drawn this religious community closer together. When you have the space available and you have events there regularly, there's a sense of commitment that you've made at that point to the community. Um, I think that people you know, start to take it more seriously. Not that I think that people out there, you know, that, that pagans or polytheists take their groups unseriously, but once you've sort of seen a group um, put forth that commitment, you just see an immediate, or at least we saw an immediate change kind of in the attitude of people um, coming to our events. There would be more people coming, there would be a lot more interest around the community. And more to the point, they would just be full of just questions um, about, about the tradition, about the building, about our organization, and also just full of stories of their own, of, of you know, their spiritual path and that kind of stuff. Um, it just seemed to really open people up tremendously. And you know, it also helps a lot when, um, you know, when we whitewashed the, the walls on the outside of the building, we put out a call to the community saying, does anybody want to stop by this Saturday and we'll have a you know, early May uh, whitewashing party and we'll have a cookout and everything. Um, you know, 12, 15, 20 people show up over the course of the day and they all have a stake in it then. They've all actually done something, you know, to help the community. Um, not everyone can donate piles of money, you know, but most people, if they really love something, they're willing to donate their time and then they feel that they have a stake in it, they're really invested in it and they start to just become closer to the organization, you know, care about it that much more because they're really a part of it. In part three of our interview, Drew Jacob walks us how Temple of the River was financed and gives tips on how you can fund a temple or project of your own. For PNC Minnesota, I'm Kara Schultz.